He thought he was amongst friends. 22 days later, he was dead. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at 10 horrifying political assassinations. New questions now about whether politics are behind a terrible tragedy overseas. A rising political star killed on the streets of England. The world mourning the loss of 41-year-old Joe Cox. For this list, we're examining some of the most brutal political slayings and the impact their demise had on the country's landscape. Which assassinations did we miss in the video? Let us know below. Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln went down in history as the president that abolished slavery and led the Union against the Confederacy in the American Civil War. I can't accomplish a goddamn thing of any human meaning or worth until we cure ourselves of slavery and end this pestilential war. In April 1865, just five days after General Robert E. Lee's surrender, Lincoln and his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, went to watch the play Our American Cousin along with guests. However, actor John Wilkes Booth had other ideas. As the crowd roars with laughter, Booth takes aim. Supporting the South, he sought to end Lincoln and his ideas. Booth snuck up behind the president and shot him before running away. Booth stepped up to him, fired a shot from perhaps three, four inches, not right against Lincoln's head, but close. While Lincoln survived for many hours, he tragically passed away. Booth was located two weeks later and perished in a shootout. The Civil War officially ended just a month after Lincoln's assassination. Leon Trotsky, a key figure in the rise of communism in Russia in the early 1900s, Trotsky was a close associate of Vladimir Lenin as the two formed the basis for the Soviet Union. However, when Lenin passed away in 1924, there was a rush for power, and Joseph Stalin claimed it. He saw his former comrade as a threat, which eventually led to Trotsky being exiled, and he then criticized Stalin's vision at any chance. The Mexican government opened the doors of his magnificent country and said to us, here you can freely defend your rights and your honor. Angered by this, Stalin sent agents to track down Trotsky. After enduring one assassination attempt in 1939, Trotsky survived another in Mexico City in May 1940. But by August, Trotsky's luck had run out as Ramon Mercader struck with an ice pick, taking out one of the last opponents to Stalin's reign. The only clue to the mystery surrounding his murder came from the dying man himself when he said, I will not survive the attack. Stalin has finally accomplished the task he has set out to do. Patrice Lumumba. Uh, Patrice Lumumba fought for the freedom of his country, and he was killed for that. And uh, the, the country never really recovered from that loss. In 1960, Lumumba became the first prime minister of what was then known as the Republic of the Congo. For years, he had been fighting to free Congo from its colonial rule by Belgium. With his left-wing views, he achieved this feat by heading the Mouvement National Congolais and gaining support throughout the African country. But by September, a pro-Belgium and U.S. Union of Congolese figures led a coup d'etat. The Belgians and the Americans sought to maintain their influence over the area. Both countries also saw Lumumba as a threat, accusing him of ties to the Soviet Union. Lumumba was arrested and tortured. In January 1961, Lumumba was executed, and his body was destroyed. When the world heard the news, they were outraged. In 2002, Belgium formally apologized for its role in Lumumba's demise. In 2022, they gave the Democratic Republic of the Congo a gold tooth, the only surviving piece of Lumumba. Congolese people at home and abroad hope it will take less time for their nation and their hero to get justice. Michael Collins. His guerrilla warfare skills during the Irish War of Independence against Great Britain were so legendary that several global revolutionary leaders studied Collins' work. Good evening, lads. Hands in the air. Drop your weapons! Now! He even orchestrated the violent Bloody Sunday event in 1920. Collins, who was one of the leaders in the Irish Republican Army, signed the Anglo-Irish Treaty in 1921, partitioning Ireland and creating the Free State. This caused the IRA to split into being either pro or anti-treaty which then led to the Irish Civil War. Do it! Fire! Fire! Heading the pro-treaty Free State Army, 
Collins was ambushed by anti-treaty forces in County Cork, Ireland in August 1922. The 31-year-old perished from a gunshot wound. Ireland was devastated by the loss, as around 500,000 people reportedly attended his funeral. Nicholas II of Russia loved, feared, revered, respected. But all too often, those who fly highest fall furthest. With rising tensions brewing in Russia, Nicholas II abdicated the throne at the end of the February Revolution in 1917. Not long after, the provisional government arrested the House of Romanov. In 1917, Tsar Nicholas II was overthrown. Lenin's Bolsheviks seized control. The royal family was then imprisoned in various locations around Russia and Siberia during this period of flux. But things changed. Nicholas, his wife, Alexandra Feodorovna, and their five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei, as well as several servants, were executed by Bolshevik revolutionaries in July 1918. After the execution, the Romanov family was brought here to Gadinayama and dumped in this old iron mine. Nicholas, who was familiar with assassination since his grandfather, Alexander II, was a victim in 1881, was the last Tsar of Russia. For years, the location of their remains was lost to time, but in 1998, they were laid to rest in St. Petersburg. Joe Cox. The world mourning the loss of 41-year-old Joe Cox, a mother of two. Siding with the Remain campaign during the Brexit debate in the UK, Cox represented the Labour Party MP for the area of Batley and Spen from 2015. In June 2016, she was on her way to a constituency surgery in West Yorkshire, England. However, Thomas Mayer slew Cox in the street. Joe Cox was shot and stabbed, rushed to a hospital where she died shortly after. Mayer, an extremist, had ties to numerous far-right groups and owned a lot of fascist paraphernalia. We have nothing but pity that his life was so devoid of love and consumed with hatred that this became his desperate and cowardly attempt to find meaning. He made no attempt to defend his deplorable actions during the trial. Mayer was sentenced to a whole life term in prison, meaning he'll never be paroled. Figures from all sides of the political spectrum banded together to celebrate the life of Cox. Her sister, Kim Ledbetter, took over as MP for Batley and Spen in 2021. Alexander Litvinenko. This was not some random killing. This was a killing with a very clear purpose and that it was a killing with some state involvement. Specializing in combating organized crime, Litvinenko was an officer in the Russian Federal Security Service after working in the KGB. However, after clashing with Vladimir Putin, Litvinenko escaped to the UK and was granted asylum. He then helped its intelligence services with information about Russia, as well as writing books and articles criticizing Putin's reign. In November 2006, Litvinenko suddenly fell ill with poisoning from polonium radiation. He was saying that he was a former member of the Russian intelligence agency and that he believed he had been poisoned by uh, some of his former colleagues. Within weeks, Litvinenko deteriorated rapidly and he perished. In 2007, the Guinness World Records inducted Litvinenko as the first person to be slain by radiation. Polonium is 100% deadly. It destroys cells the immune system, and leads to organ failure throughout the body. Before passing, Litvinenko accused Putin of his demise, and in the aftermath, those accusations grew louder. In 2021, the European Court of Human Rights ruled that Russia was responsible for Litvinenko's passing. John F. Kennedy. In November 1963, U.S. President John F. Kennedy arrived in Texas to smooth over tensions within the Democratic Party. The young president, just 46, the first U.S. leader to be born in the 20th century, not even three years in office, he would never grow older than this image. As he traveled in an open-top limousine through Dallas on November 22nd with his wife Jackie, Texas Governor John Connolly and Connolly's wife, he was fatally shot. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Connolly was wounded but recovered. The assassin was Lee Harvey Oswald, whose motives remain unknown. A few years earlier, he had identified as a communist and defected to the Soviet Union before returning to the U.S. Oswald was arrested 
but just two days later, he too was fatally shot, this time by nightclub owner Jack Ruby. JFK's assassination shocked the nation and sparked conspiracy theories that are still debated today. Down this avenue of sadness, they bring President John F. Kennedy, martyred hero, lie in state under the great dome of the Capitol. Benazir Bhutto. A controversial figure, loved by many, loathed by others for her outspoken views. She broke ground by becoming the first woman to lead a democratic government in a majority Muslim country when Bhutto became prime minister of Pakistan in 1988. With two reigns in the role, things fell apart in 1996 when Bhutto was accused of corruption. She spent years in exile, where she vocally criticized the regime of Pakistan's president, Pervez Musharraf. In 2007, Bhutto returned to Pakistan to run in the general election. Having already survived one assassination attempt, Bhutto attended a rally in Rawalpindi in December. At the time, it was one of Pakistan's largest bombing attacks in which over 150 people died. Bhutto survived, but in December of the same year, she was not so lucky. There, she was slain, and upwards of 20 people perished as well. While a firearm and a bomb were used, it's unclear what the fatal cause exactly was. Bhutto's death remains controversial. Her killers have still not been brought to justice despite investigations by the Pakistani and British police and a United Nations investigation team. This event sparked violent protests across the country. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Indira Gandhi. Very deepest condolences to the Indian people. It appears, and I stress it appears, we have the report only from AFP, the Agence France Presse, that Mrs. Gandhi has been assassinated, that she is dead. Gandhi had quite a legacy in India. Not only was she the first woman prime minister of the country, but she was in charge during 1971's independence war and sided with Bangladesh. Amid her second term in office in October 1984, Gandhi was assassinated by two of her Sikh bodyguards. In 1977, she lost a re-election bid, but returned to the prime minister's post in 1980 and angered the Sikh population by her handling of Sikh violence in Punjab. Allegedly as a response to Operation Blue Star, an operation against Sikh leaders, the bodyguards were executed in 1989. In the aftermath, her son, Rajiv Gandhi, became prime minister until 1989. In May 1991, Gandhi, who was on the campaign trail in Sripuram Budur, was the victim of an explosion carried out by the militant group, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. Fourteen other people, along with the assassin, also lost their lives. 